My sermon today is very simple, as most of them are. Turn with me to John chapter 8. John chapter 8, I read a few verses, and uh, my main text will be from verse 44. So I'll just read the preceding verses so you'll get the context. John 8, 33, he was discussing with the Pharisees. In verse 32, he said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. There's the power of truth. They answered him, we be Abraham's seed. And we're never in bondage to any man. How you, how, what are you saying? We shall be made free. You know, you could be bound and not know it. Jesus answered them, verily, very truly, truly, I say unto you. Whosoever committed sin is a servant of sin. Now what does that have to do with the discussion? And the servant abideth not in the house or ever, but the son abides. So if the son, therefore, shall make you free, you shall be partially free. Good. You shall be free indeed. There's the power of truth to bring freedom. So I'll go down to my text. Verse 42. Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, you would love me. Isn't that the truth? For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why, why, why don't you understand my speech? Why? Why, why what I'm saying is so confusing to you? <clears throat> because you cannot bear to hear my word. So here's the text. You are of your father, the devil. You didn't know the devil had so many children. And the lust or desires of your father you will do. Now Jesus never maligned the character anywhere. But he's talking some truth about this guy. He was a murderer from the beginning. Who did he kill? And abode not in the truth. What was the truth? Because there is no truth in him. None. No truth in him. When he speaks, when you see his lips moving, he's lying. When he speaketh a lie, he speaks of his own. For he is a liar. And the father of lies and because I tell you the truth you believe me not my topic <clears throat> the power of truth and the failure of lies I want to show you actually I want to tell you the truth about the liar I want to tell you the truth about the liar. My theme is, liar, liar, your tail is going to be on fire. <laughs> if you free your revelation, you're going to see he's going to be cast into the lake of fire. Liar, liar, your tail is going to be on fire. There were three young men around 20 years of age, and they were talking about how good their fathers were. They were tailors. The three dads were tailors. They can sew well. The first guy boasted about his father and said, my father can sew so well. 
You just have to put the man in front of him and he will sew a suit for him. Wow. Second guy said, uh-uh. My father is so good. The man just have to run down the road and pass by the corner. And my father see him, he'll sew a suit for him. You hear lie? Third guy said, nothing. My father is so good. Just show him the corner the man took. And my father will so suit for him. Well, I'm going to tell you about somebody who could lie better than the three of them. The first lie. I have eight lies. The first lie. I'm talking for myself. He lied to me. When I was 50 years old, I was building this building, and a voice came to me. I heard the voice. Now you've got to understand what Paul said, that a messenger of Satan was sent to buffet me. Satan has messengers. The messengers bring lies. No messenger from Satan will ever tell you the truth. So I heard this voice saying to me, you're building this church, but you'll never live to enjoy it. And the voice continued. I was 50 years old. My father died at 57. And the voice said to me, you will never pass your father's age. You will die before 57. That lie haunted me for seven years. Well, I know I had at least seven, six years, so I didn't worry too much. But when I was coming into 57, in 2007, I really shivered. The lie was affecting me. One day, Pastor Harold Blair came to preach, sitting right there. He said something simple, but was so profound, was a Rima word to me. And he looked at me, and he said, Pastor, you will not die until you have fulfilled all that God has called you to. Whoa! That sank into my soul and I begin to feel strong. And I begin to feel strong. And as I walked through that door, a lady hugged me. And she quoted Psalms 118 and said to me, You shall not die, but you shall live and declare the glory of the Lord. That was 19. That was 207. years have gone and I am alive and well. The devil lied but the truth of God's word conquered the lie. I will not die until I'm 96. Let the truth win. And the devil has been lying to you and said, you're not going to make it. Look at you, you're old. All your bones creaking. Your muscles aching. You're not going to make it. <clears throat> Let the truth prevail. And tell that liar, when my time is come, I will be ready. I am living for God so that I can die when the time comes with joy. To be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord rejoices in the death of his saints. Oh, to die is gain. Don't let the devil make you scared of dying. You were born again so that you will never have to die twice. Hallelujah. I ain't afraid of dying. 
I'm just sorry if I have to go. My wife is not going to remarry. <laughs> she told me that. And I cannot believe her. She did not lie. <laughs> because it's hard to find somebody like me, she said. <laughs> uh, that's what she said. Say with me. I will not die. But live. To declare the glory of God. Give him praise. Hallelujah. You're not old. You're not even old to start a new ministry. Hannah. Sorry, Anna was 85 years old when she entered into the temple and began a prayer ministry. You are not old. Even the World Health Organization is now saying that when you're 80, you've just entered Senior stage. Yeah, they, they moved it up. But we knew that long time ago. The Bible said so. Hallelujah. Okay, let's move on. The second lie he's telling you is about your health. He says you will always be sick. You will never be healed. You hear the echo. You will always have to go to the doctors. You will need more than one doctor, he says. You will have to live on pills. You know, when you're born, there's seven stage of a man. When you're born, the first stage is spills. The second stage is fills. The third stage is I'm hustling up. The third stage is ills. The fourth stage is pills. The fifth stage is wills. The sixth stage is thrills. Whatever the seventh stage is. <laughs> but he says you will always live on pills. You will be like this for the rest of your life. And you listen to that. And you've lost, you've lost hope. And you say, oh my gosh. This thing is sung in true. Look at me. Look at the amount of tablets I have to take. Lie, lie, lie. You have been healed on the finished work of Jesus Christ. You don't have to live a sick life. You don't have to be sick every day. I know we get sick off and on. But sickness is not your destiny. You will not die by sickness. You will die healthy. Hallelujah. He's lying. And some people are falling for the lies. The truth is. God said I will give you life. And I will give it to you more abundantly. The truth is I am Al I am. The Alpha and the Omega. I am the beginning of your life and I will take it when I'm ready. His name has been called Jehovah Rapha. Jehovah Rofika. I am the Lord that heals you. He's a healer. Say, I believe in healing. I shall be well. I confess good health. I pray that you prosper. And be in good health is the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Give him glory, somebody. Or you will not live in sickness all the days of your life. Believe the truth. Condemn the lies. The third lie he's been telling people. Is he lied about your wealth. He said you will always be poor. You will never own a home. You will live off people's sympathy. You will never have money. You will always be borrowing. And you will never be able to pay back. Something is always, I'm going to send something to always eat your leftovers. You will never have enough for next week. Lies, lies, lies. What is the truth? My God shall supply 
all, not some, all your needs. According to his riches and glory, we're talking about riches. We're talking about he who was rich became poor so that you who are poor might become rich. God have no problem with rich believers. I wish all of you become millionaires. I don't know if you're going to handle it, but that's my wish. Money could sink some people. If you know how to use money well, God will bring it to you. But stop confessing you will always be poor. Stop thinking like a, a beggar, a mendicant. Somebody always stretching out their hand. You are not like that. You are God's child. You have the favor of God upon you. It shall be well with you. Your tomorrow has already been provided. Can I hear an amen from somebody who believes that God is able to take care of you and take care of your more tomorrow? I don't know what tomorrow holds, but I know who holds tomorrow. And he holds me in his hand. And my future is secure in Jesus Christ. And in Jesus Christ alone. Hallelujah, somebody. Thank you. He lied about your marriage and about your family and about your children. How long he's been telling you your marriage is not going to last? And you've been thinking divorce. He told you. That your family is a disgrace. He bad talks your family to other people and they believe it. And they throw it in your face. You see. The devil doesn't lie just frank like that and black and white. He doesn't say, hey, do you believe in Jesus or do you believe in me? No, 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 no. He's very shrewd. Very cunning. He takes the truth and he twists. That's what he did to Eve. He didn't really lie altogether. He took what God said and twisted it. And she believed it twisted. She had a twisted theology. Don't let the devil twist God's truth to you. Take the word. How did Jesus uh, defeat him? He said, it is written. Let the written word be your word to stand on. Let the written word be your guarantee. Oh, I don't need a prophetic word. I need this word. Because it's written in red. And it stands for river, heaven, and earth shall pass away. But not one jot. Not one tittle. In the Hebrew and the Greek, they had these little dots and whatever you call them. Spanish the dealers. Not even that will pass away. Nathaniel said, Can any good thing come from Nazareth? Can any good thing come from your family, they say? I could go down history and show you some of the greatest legends came from poor families, from single parents, from families that were ruined by the devil, but praying mothers brought their children up before God and watched their children conquer the world. The devil told you your children will always be broke. They will always depend on you. And you have to, you start saving up for them. If God can take care of you, believe me, he will take care of your children. Can you give him glory? Hear what the word of the Lord says. Psalms 90, my favorite. Verse 12, so teach us to number our days. That we may apply our hearts wisely. Return, O oh Lord, how long? Change your mind, Lord, concerning your servants. Oh, satisfy us early with thy mercy, that we may 
rejoice and be glad all of our days. God wants you to be glad for the rest of your days. That's his desire. Make us glad according to the days wherein you have afflicted us. He's measuring. And the years wherein we have seen evil. I know you've been seeing evil a long time. I know you've lost your joy in some areas. I know hope is dwindling. And you're getting scared. You don't have anything in retirement. Your 401k has turned to 40000k. Z. You have nothing to look forward to. He said, let thy work appear unto thy servants and thy glory unto their children. Let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us and establish thou the work of our hands. Yea, bless our children. Because I have one beautiful daughter in every way, I regret I didn't have more. Because if they were going to come out like her, give me a dozen. See, I'm so proud of you. Who knows? I never thought. It never entered in my mind that you will come into ministry. And that you will find a husband who will be equally happy to work with you and to be part of your life. You are our legacy. We are blessed to have you. And I know, I was just reading, I was just, just reading something you wrote, um, and I kept it since 2015. And I, I, I didn't have this in my plan, but, but I'm going to read it. Daddy, please read all of these words carefully. Because everything in is 100% true. I know I have given you some hard times this year. <laughs> but no matter what, you still loved me and treated me the same as always. You and mommy. Everything, you know everything that I really do and I appreciate it. You mean more than the world to me. I don't know what I would do if you weren't here anymore. Or if something happened to you. Nothing ain't happening to me. Okay? <laughs> I love you and cherish you with all of my heart. Mike, look out. You will always be the man in my life. Even when I am married. Have a great Father's Day because you deserve the most better than anyone else. Love, Candace, 2015. <laughs> Your children will rise up and call you blessed. Amen. Don't let the enemy lie to you. Amen. Hallelujah. Can any good thing come out from your family? Sure. Look at Simon. All his kids, the Samaros, all the kids in ministry. And many of you have your, your family in ministry. We bless God for that. Amen. Can you give God praise? <laughs> Not only will they rise up and call you blessed, they will honor you in your old age. Amen. They will take care of you. Have that faith. Not that you need it, but they'll be good to you because you have been good to them. Almost there. He lied to you about your future. He said, you see your tomorrows? They ain't going to be good. Your job, you may lose it. It is uncertain about your future. Who knows when they will fire you? You've been thinking. You've been hearing those voices. You'll never be able to pay your mortgage. You'll never drive a new car. Tell them. 
Tell him he's a liar. Your future is so well secured. I got to read the verse. Jeremiah 29, 11. God is saying, for I know. You don't know. But I know the thoughts that I think about you. God is always thinking about you. You've never left his heart. He engraved your name in the palm of his hand. I know the thoughts that I think to what you say at the Lord. Thoughts of peace. Not of evil. To give you an unexpected end. I will give you peace. And not sorrow. I will give you health. And not sickness. Your tomorrow will be beautiful. Your future is in good hands. Better than all state. He lied to you about your church. He said it will close down. It will fail. People will laugh at you for going to that church. Some of you have been coming here for 25 years and more. Tell them that. The truth is, this church has survived the worst in 31 years. 31 years, this church has been alive and kicking. And we are coming back up again with power and glory. Our latter day shall be better than our former glory. Can I hear somebody say amen? amen. The final lie he says to everybody is that you cannot live for God. You cannot walk holy. Mick, you keep telling them. You'll never be good enough to make it in the rapture. There's always be something that will hold you back. And he's been lying to you that you are no good. You're not walking right. You're always in the flesh. Even your prayers are not being answered. Say to him, Liar, liar, your tail's going to be on fire. Jesus said he's a continuous liar. A liar from the beginning and he will lie to the end. He's the father and creator of lies. He, there is no truth in him. And I want you to know the word of God said he will burn in the lowest hell forever and ever. Liar, disappear in Jesus' name. I pray that you will never believe any of the devil's lies, but that you will believe the truth, and the truth that you know, and the truth that you believe will set you free from every lying demon and every messenger from hell that comes to tell you other than what God says about you. You are blessed. Give him glory. The power of truth. The failure of a lie. You believe the word of God. Every lie against you.